And as soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole council held a consultation. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so that Pilate wondered. Now at the feast, he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he was wont to do for them. And he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, then what shall I do with the man whom you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, Praetorium. And they called together the whole battalion, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and plaiting a crown of thorns, they put it on him, and they began to salute him. And they struck his head with a reed and spat upon him, and they knelt down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passer-by, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in front of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And he offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests mocked him to one another with the scribes, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling you life. And one ran and, filling a sponge full of vinegar, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw that he thus breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from afar, among whom were Mary Magdalene 
and Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and Salome, who, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered to him, and also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. And when evening had come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself looking for the kingdom of God, took courage and went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate wondered if he were already dead. And summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he was already dead. And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. And he brought a linen shroud and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Maybe see. Paul wrote, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Once upon a time, in a certain kingdom, lay a beautiful garden. Of all the dwellers of the garden, the most beautiful and beloved to the master of the garden was a splendid and noble bamboo. Year after year, bamboo grew yet more beautiful and gracious. He was conscious of his master's love, yet he was modest and in all things gentle. Often when wind came to sway merrily, tossing and leaping and bowing in joyous abandon, he would dance with the wind. He would lead the great dance of the garden, which most delighted his master's heart. One day, the master himself drew near to look at this bamboo with eyes of curious expectancy. Bamboo, in a passion of love, bowed his head to the ground in joyful greeting. The master spoke, Bamboo, I would use you. Bamboo flung his head to the sky in utter delight. The day of days had been growing hour by hour, the day in which he would find his completion and destiny. His voice came low, Master, I am ready. Use me as you want. Bamboo, the master's voice, a bit grave, I would be obliged to take you and cut you down. A trembling of great horror shook Bamboo, cut me down, me whom you, Master, have made the most beautiful in your garden, cut me down, oh, not that, not that, use me for your joy, O oh Master, but cut me not down. Beloved Bamboo, the master's voice grew even graver still. If I do not cut you down, I cannot use you. The garden grew still. Wind held her breath. Bamboo slowly bent her proud and glorious head. Then came a whisper, Master, if you cannot use me unless you cut me down, then do your will and cut. Bamboo, beloved bamboo, I would cut your leaves and branches from you also. Master, master, spare me. Cut me down and lay my beauty in the dust, but would you take from me my leaves and branches also? Bamboo, alas, if I do not cut them away, I cannot use you. 
The sun hid her face. A listening butterfly glided fearfully away. Bamboo shivered in terrible expectancy, whispering low, Master, cut away. Bamboo, bamboo, I would divide you in two and cut out your heart, for if I do not cut so, I cannot use you. Master, master, then cut and divide. So the master of the garden took bamboo and cut him down and cut off his branches and stripped his leaves and divided him in two and cut out his heart and lifting him gently carried him to where there was a spring of fresh sparkling water in the midst of the master's dry fields. Then putting down one end of broken bamboo into the spring and the other end into the water channel in the field, the master laid down gently his beloved bamboo. The spring sang welcome. The clear sparkling water raced joyously down the channel of bamboo's torn body into the waiting fields. Then the rice was planted and the days went by. The shoots grew, the harvest came. In that day was bamboo once so glorious in his stately beauty, yet more glorious in his brokenness and humility. For in his beauty he was life abundant, but in his brokenness he became a channel of abundant life to his master's world. Jesus died on the cross for each one of us. He loved us so much that he died so that we might have life and have life abundantly. Amen.